Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is my vintage Tamiya Bruiser. Now I've had this thing since the first couple of months of eBay, so it's been around for quite some time. As you can see, although this is an original Bruiser, its cab section has been chopped off and set alight because I'm simply not a fan of that. But I always love the overall look of this truck. I must say that uh, as you see this truck, uh, any vintage Tamiya fans may get angry with me because the truck is in surprisingly poor condition. And I don't want to get into that, but just note that we are going to do a rebuild series on this truck to tidy it up. But what I want to focus on right now, so I dust some stuff off the truck, is the missing battery compartment. The reason the battery compartment is not there is because I've created a door for it. And if you've seen the HGP407 video, you'll be very familiar with this, but I wanted to cover this installation because it's a little bit different. This truck came with the 4000 milliamp battery, and that's what these two little extensions are for. I hope I've got them on the right side. I think I do. The 4000 milliamp battery fits this entire area, but if you ran the standard 7.2 volt battery, there was a different bracket that would snap in here. You still have to use a rubber band to hold the battery down and that is not acceptable. So what we've got here are a few parts to modify this. The plan is to install this little bracket right here, which will thread into the base. Then you install this bracket here which goes like this. And this will adapt the bracket to the base. I needed this little interim bracket here because otherwise I wasn't able to access the screw directly beneath the lower battery retainer. Like the HGP407, you have these two little clips which will screw in right here to sandwich the battery retainer in place. And then our door, which will go here and simply tilt over and enclose the battery. The opening for the battery cables is very, very small in this. And I didn't really like that. I wanted to give additional room, so I've left the opening that I've created a little bit larger. It does create this little kind of step right here, if you can see that. Uh, if you're so willing to cut that out, you can. But this way, I figure it would allow the battery cables to exit in a less sharp angle. Let's install this. The first thing I want to mention is there may be some components that you need to remove to do this installation. And if you're bruiser is a fully original uh, vehicle then you may not want to do this but everything that i am doing is not modifying anything you will not chop anything cut anything so to put this bracket on you're going to have these larger holes and you're going to have these smaller holes it is my recommendation that on the smaller holes you clean them out with a 2.6 millimeter drill bit and then tap these with an m3 machine screw tap. The reason you have to do this is because these walls are very thin and I fear that if you use a self-tapping screw you'll split them. So please I recommend tapping these with an M3 screw. But with the larger hole I will simply pass a self-tapping screw straight through that and use the original hole to hold it down. So I'll do that to one, two, three, and four. With that bracket installed we can place this other one right on top of it and you can use a I think up to an eight millimeter long screw. Uh, in this case here, this screw does come into contact with the, the rear of this, so you may have an issue, but I think an eight millimeter long M3 is more than acceptable to not have to modify that. I've got those screws installed, and just note that the screw head on this hole and on this hole comes very close to rubbing, actually it does rub, on this inside surface, but you should be able to get the screw in with no problem. These screws are six millimeters long. I'll use the same six millimeter screws here at the rear, and you are also going to want to tap these little guys with an M3 tap as you did these lower ones. So these will go just like that and you'll thread it down from the top down. Okay, and the other side has been retained. You can see it's, it's really on there quite well. So we're going to run a screw through this hole and this hole and pass it through obviously the corresponding mount for the top. But please note that you only thread this part and this part. This hole and this hole is larger as is the hole through this bracket as well. So remember, only tap this one that is with an M3 tap like you've done with the other ones, and then just use a 16 millimeter, I think that's 16 millimeter. Yeah, a 16 millimeter long M3 screw and you're all done. So we've put those screws in there, and as you can see, the battery door should open and close very easily. To retain this, just a standard cotter pin will work. If the hole is plugged, you can use a one to 1.5 millimeter drill bit to clear that out. You'll also want to use the factory hardware to put all this back into your bruiser. Well, now that the battery door is in, we can just drop in my battery. Now this is a soft case lithium polymer battery, but this door is designed to fit the original size nickel 
cadmium batteries that used to be available back when these were new and therefore any battery of that size will still fit so usually i run these batteries and this is a 5200 milliamp battery it's quite a bit larger than a lot of my older soft cell packs and uh, in no way has any issue fitting inside this case you can see here that this whole area has remained open and that is so that the wires do have a very easy path to exit i didn't want to enca uh, encapsulate this so that if you had to put a voltage alarm or if you had to kind of stuff the wires in here a little better so they don't protrude from the outside well folks that completes this installation it was very straightforward it does not modify or alter your bruiser in a way that it cannot be undone. I said, I don't need these pieces anymore on mine. And if you have the standard uh, retaining clips for the bruiser, you also won't need those. To my knowledge, this will only fit the original bruiser. The Mountaineer, the 2012 bruiser, and the Mountain Rider all have the same battery tray, which is very similar to that on the HGP407. I also wanted to mention that I do not own the Mountaineer, the new release, re-release Bruiser, or the re-release Mountain Rider, so I am unable to make one of these enclosures for those vehicles. If you have one of these trays you can lend me, I would be more than happy to uh, confirm that the HGP407s is the same geometry or update it to fit that as well. So remember, this only fits the original release Bruiser. Again, thank you all so much for watching. We will see this Bruiser uh, fairly soon to give it a good updating and cleaning because I think it really needs it. We will see you next time.